Before I start, I want to once again say that all the following creations will be in, linked in the description. So if you want to take a look at them and disassemble them and see how they function to then model your own things off of, feel free to just yoink them in the description. Now for the actual video. To start with, um, I see a lot of people using just basic wheels. That's fine. They work. They work well for most things. In fact, they're very complexity efficient. What I don't see a lot of is more advanced custom forms of mobility. Like in space, sure, I do see people using RCS systems, which is reaction control systems, using like thrusters for turning and strafing sometimes, but even then it's not often, and that's about the extent of it. Much less custom wheel systems and custom ground systems. And that's pretty much what the purpose of this video is. To help explain these concepts, and to help distribute them so that people actually are capable of taking advantage of them. Naturally, because these are taken mostly from the, from the real world, not everything translates to trail makers super well, but it should still work pretty well and it should still result in some very unique effects, which I hope that more people take advantage of. To start with Omni Wheels, the concept is simple. Having one large wheel with other smaller wheels around the circumference which roll in a perpendicular direction. Perpendicular being the opposite to, no, not opposite, 90 degrees to, there. What this allows is forwards and backwards motion while being frictionless on the other axis. This allows for better tank steering and, because unlike in real life, in trail makers, you can power any of the wheels. Whereas in real life, because the wheels need to be small and they need to be able to fit comfortably, they can't be powered, so only the larger wheel can be powered. This means that in trail makers, you can actually get strafe from just a normal car configuration of Omni wheels. What this gives you is it allows you to go forwards, backwards, do tank steering twice as well, and do strafing. Pretty simple. I would like to touch on the fact that the tank steering both uses the larger wheels to go forwards and backwards to do tank steering, and the smaller wheels to go left and right to do tank steering simultaneously. And by doing both simultaneously, it gives more redundancy and control. Pretty simple system. Yes, it has the very big and obvious downside of soaking up a lot of complexity, but even then, for builds that are pretty low complexity things, for builds that just go for aesthetics or are just experimental, I don't see these a lot even in them. And it's quite simple to build, and it's quite useful. It's effectively a hovercraft, but you actually have friction so you don't go sliding around all over the place. It's pretty effective. But in real life, to simulate the fact that we can't power every single wheel on the outer surface, I will remove some of the engines. And as you can see here, this results in more side to side sliding and less control. The way that people get around it in real life is by placing the wheels perpendicularly. So you have a set of Omni wheels going one way and a set of Omni wheels going the other way. This results in the same full control along all axes as before, but in this case, you don't need to powder the, power the outer wheels to achieve it. I would like to note something else here. Um, this does result in a very smooth ride, uh, but I am using the spinning, I forget the name. I'm not using the servos because the spinning blocks have a faster top speed, but they do have some startup lag, and they do have less force. So both are valid configurations, and for the stability of the ride, it matters a lot on your suspension and the weight of your creation, but generally I've found that these are generally a lot smoother than you would expect due to wheel sync and a couple of other weird interactions with the wheels, which soften the blow a lot more than you would expect. So back to Omni wheels, they are quite effective and they are quite good, but 
In real life, long story short, the problem with omniwheels is that you need that perpendicular pair of wheels. What if you could just achieve the same thing with a more conventional configuration? The reason why the omniwheel setup in real life is oftentimes suboptimal is because if you're just going forwards, that means that the wheels that provide side-to-side -side motion are completely not being used. That is wasted potential because you still have the motor there, but you aren't using it. So this is where mechanum wheels come in. It's omni wheels, but with a 45 degree off, 45 degree rotation on the outer smaller wheels. This results in all the same stuff as omni wheels, except now all the wheels are, are capable of being pointed in the same direction and do, all of them are capable of helping with strafing and all of them are capable of helping with going forwards and backwards. Again, this is probably even more impractical than the Omni wheels because they need of extra hinges. However, all in all, this is still something that I haven't seen done much and I feel like people should try it out. It's pretty neat. And this me the mechanism wheels specifically are pretty unneeded in trail makers due to the fact that the Omni wheels can be powered anyway, the outer edges of them, which pretty much nullifies one of the main needs uh, and the main purposes of mechanism wheels. But counterpoint, they look cool. And I don't need I say more. That's all people should really need when they're building something. And so we've discussed these very, very complexity intensive wheel mechanisms that can help give you an edge under certain some conditions that look cool and that are generally pretty neat systems. But what about something more practical? Well, this is where I go into one of my other creations, which this one is not a test bed, but rather something that was actually made for a specific look and made to function well. Sadly, because of the nature of the me using go-kart wheels, because they are the smallest, this thing only works on very, very specific types of terrain, specifically paved roads. But past that, it has the same mobility, just drastically less efficient in exchange for having drastically less complexity. What this allows is forwards, back, forwards and backwards motion, turning and strafing all in one, with significantly less complexity, all at, the all at the cost of a lot of sliding, a lot of smoke when driving, and some instabilities when driving. This, just by angling the wheels 45 degrees uh, inwards on all of them, it allows you to maneuver as if it were mechanism wheels, just a lot less efficient because half the wheels are constantly sliding. There's nothing really I found to alleviate this, but it does work and it does work decently well. And it is something that is actually within the range of potentially practical for actual vehicles in say, for example, combat. After all, one of the main reasons why, at least I think one of the main reasons why tanks seem to have turrets is because having the ability to shoot in one direction and go in another direction is very, very useful. But if you can strafe with the tank, then that would eliminate that need. So perhaps maybe casemate guns, a gun that is mounted directly to a hull, that is, could be more effective with this configuration. There's a bunch of other small opportunities such as these around these types of wheels. These wheels also have very different performances on different types of terrains, which can also be advantageous or disadvantageous under some conditions, and many other such things. So to end all this off, what I really mean to say is, these things look cool, I want more people to use them, 